you've probably considered yourself to be incredibly unfortunate at one time or another. I think it's only natural, and we all have. The same goes for the 25-year-old Eddie Slovik. He considered himself to be the most unlucky man on earth. And, well, from his perspective, it isn't too difficult to see why. During the Second World War, nearly 50,000 US soldiers and 100,000 British soldiers deserted. But even though these numbers are quite staggering, and desertion tends to lead to a court-martial and harsh sentence, there was only one US soldier throughout the entire war that was to be executed for that exact crime. And that soldier was Eddie Slovik. And he was well aware that he was the only one. Eddie Slovik was a Polish-American boy born in February 1920 that grew up in Detroit. His early years were filled with petty grime. He had multiple run-ins with the police and even was arrested several times. In the summer of 1944, he was conscripted in the US Army and sent to France as an infantry soldier. He didn't participate in D-Day and when he arrived in Europe, the Allied powers were already making plans to advance into Germany over the Ardennes. After several months of training in the European war theater, uh, mind you, Slovik had not seen combat yet, he decided to desert. He considered himself not cut out for a war, was too afraid to serve in an infantry unit, just didn't believe in it. A pretty curious decision considering the vast majority of all deserters that tried to escape battle served on the front line and only decided to desert after long, violent campaigns. And unlike many deserters that simply attempted to disappear in the chaotic war theater, Slovik publicly acknowledged he'd prefer prison over war. He wrote a note in which he explained his reasons and gave it to an army soup kitchen. The cook that received the letter informed the military police. After the summoning of the military police and an army officer, they gave Slovik the opportunity to tear up the note and return to his unit. Slovik refused and stated he was willing to be court-martialed. He expected to receive a light sentence, like the 48 other men that were sentenced to death for desertion before him. All of them appealed, and all of them were accepted, and the sentences were actually reduced. So Slovik figured his would be as well. In November 1944, Slovik's case was brought in front of the military court. He was sentenced to death, and the court reasoned the note was proof Slovik was a deserter. Quite the miscalculation on Slovik's part, and he was incredibly shocked by the verdict, understandably. He sent a grace request to General Dwight D. Eisenhower, which was rejected. Because unlike the men that were sentenced to death before him, his desertion could not have come at a more unfortunate time of the war. It was reasoned his objection to serving in the army based on principle was bad for the morale of the military. By this time, the U.S. Army was stuck after the Battle of Hürtgen Forest resulted in a German defensive victory, and the U.S. Army was subsequently faced with the Ardennes Offensive. During the initial battle of Hürtgen Forest, Slovik's battalion suffered a casualty rate of over 35%, didn't exactly strengthen Slovik's case, and his appeal was received at the height of the Battle of the Bulge. In short, it wasn't the right time to offer clemency to deserters, and the army high command wanted to make an example out of Slovik because of the precarious setbacks of the European war theater. Correspondence between high-ranking U.S. commanders shows that they saw the trial and execution of Slovik as necessary to ensure no other soldiers would follow his example. Yet, curiously enough, it was decided his execution would take place in the remote small village Sans marie aux mines in secret. Not to mention the fact that the Allies won the Battle of the Bulge on the 25th of January, six days before the execution took place. Yet, all this didn't dissuade those responsible for Slovik's execution, and on the 31st of January 1945, the sentence was carried out. Slovik was stripped of his medals and put against a wall. Standing there, he said he didn't regret deserting, and blamed his arrest for petty crime, for the fact that he was to be executed. Actually, for a deserter that said he was afraid of war, he faced his execution with incredible composure and bravery. Before he was shot, the chaplain asked Slovik to say a Hail Mary for him in heaven, which he replied that he would, and he said he hoped the chaplain wouldn't follow him too soon after. Slovik was subsequently shot by a firing squad, killing him instantly. But the aftermath of the execution, the dates and reasoning didn't match up, just like they don't match up now. Not to mention the secrecy. Because of the initial rationale of making an example out of him didn't really hold ground, the exact circumstances of his execution were kept secret. 
Even his wife, Antoinette, back in the United States, merely received the message that Slovik died in the European war theater. It wasn't until three years after the fact, in 1948, that journalist William Bradford Huey published about the real circumstances of Slovik's death in the magazine Liberty. But he anonymized Slovik and wrote about a 25-year-old white American man. In the article, Huey asked why only one person ended up being executed for desertion during the war. In 1954, the true identity of Eddie Slovik was released to the public. Huey again publicized it in the novel The Execution of Private Slovik. In it, Slovik's story was immortalized, and 20 years later, a perhaps more famous film was released, starring Martin Sheen. In the film, Sheen word for word replicated the execution of Slovik. Previously, Frank Sinatra wanted to create a film based on Slovik's life, but when he made his ideas public, he was blamed for being a communist friend. Because Sinatra had openly supported the candidacy of John F. Kennedy for president, he decided not to create the film. Now, Slovik wasn't the first US soldier to be executed for desertion, but he was the first soldier in a very long time to be executed for desertion. The soldier before him was a certain William Schmitz of the 19th Pennsylvania Volunteers. He was executed during the American Civil War in 1865. During that war, over 300,000 soldiers deserted from either the Union or Confederate armies. Famous writer Mark Twain managed to desert from both. After the American Civil War, there were multiple desertions, but none of them resulted in an execution. In total, during the First World War, 24 soldiers were sentenced to death for desertion, but President Woodrow Wilson commuted all of these to prison sentences. Executions for desertion really seemed like a thing of the past until the Second World War nearly ended, and Private Slovik simply drew the short end of the stick. Okay, so a story that is somewhat related to Slovik's caught my interest as I was researching this. As I mentioned, Slovik considered himself to be the most unlucky soldier ever. Yet if he was the unluckiest, then another soldier, namely Private Wayne Powers, must have been the luckiest. Private Powers was a 23-year-old army truck driver that resupplied the front lines after the successful Normandy offensive. During one of his stops in a small French village, he met a French girl, Yvette Beleuze, the two had a click, although Powers didn't speak French and Beleuze didn't speak any English. When several days later Powers' truck, while resupplying the front lines, was ambushed, most likely by deserters, he decided to desert and return to the small French village and meet Beleuze. She happily received him and he deserted and hid in her home while the war was waging on around them. During the day she worked at a local textile factory and Powers stayed at home hidden. The couple couldn't officially marry, but they had five children in the next couple of years. Powers remained in hiding, though, raising the children at home. Meanwhile, not just the Second World War ended, but as time progressed, the Korean War broke out and ended. Powers was officially listed as missing in action, and the army charged him in absentia with desertion. Because his remains were never found, there were multiple searches for him, but he wasn't discovered, sneakily hiding in the little French village. Thirteen years later, in 1958, a car accident happened in front of the couple's home. Powers peeked through the curtains to see what was going on, upon which French gendarmes went to investigate the house, since there was no record of a man living there. Powers was interrogated upon his discovery, and when they discovered his true identity, he was handed over to the American military police. Following an article about the case in U.S. newspapers, the United States Embassy in Paris was flooded with over 60,000 letters all requesting clemency for Power's situation and the fact he simply fell in love with a French girl. A court-martial sentenced Powers to 10 years of hard labor, but reduced it to six months. After widespread outcry, the sentence was overturned entirely. Powers was allowed to move back to France, and two years later, Powers and Beleuze officially married in the French village after their sixth child was born. Powers' story is quite the contrast to that of poor Slovik, and goes to show the randomness with which the unfortunate Slovik was executed. I suppose he really was the most unlucky man on earth at that point. Thank you for watching this video. If there's a topic or event you'd like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also really like to thank all my patrons for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider checking me out on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will gain access to the exclusive Patreon series. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.